Okay, all right, now, now we're ready. Okay, so we're gonna do a CMA and it's 564 Field Stream Way, Lawrenceville, right? Three yes. zero zero uh -huh. four. How many bedrooms and bathrooms? So basically what I'm doing is I'm getting the information that's on that seller lead sheet. Um, okay, it's um three bedrooms, two bathrooms. Three bed, two bath. Uh, I'm going to pull up the yeah, seller. And they, have, they don't have a garage. They converted the garage to like a big room. So I, I don't know if you would call that like a fourth room. Okay. All right. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull up the seller lead sheet so that we can kind of walk through. Uh, let me, let me do share screen real quick. Share. Share. Boom. Boom. Okay. You can see this seller lead sheet, right? Can you see the screen? Um, it's coming up now. Yeah, that's oh, there. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm in this middle section right here. So we got the address, bedrooms and bathrooms. You said it's a three bedroom, two bath, but it's got like a, they they enclosed the garage. And, yes. And made it into like a big family room. Yes. No, it's a big, it's just a big room. It's it, it's out of the kitchen. Is there? So she uses it for like, huh? I'm sorry, she uses it for what? Just to store stuff. Okay. I mean, that, I mean, a garage, if you enclose a garage, is it a two car? Or one? Was it a one car or two car garage? Two car. So that's like roughly four to 500 extra square feet. So, I mean, that's large enough to be a bedroom. Is there a closet in there that, that you know of? Yeah, there is. There's a closet and there's a window. I'm sure there's windows. Yeah, there's a window. Well, so technically this could be a four bedroom. So we'll see. Okay. We'll see, okay. Um, so square footage year type, all that kind of stuff. We'll pull that off the uh, tax record. Do you know if there's an HOA? Um, I don't think there is, no. Okay. And um, is there a payoff amount? Do they owe a mortgage on it? She does. Um, when the, like back in, I think it was 2008, I think it was, she was going through foreclosure and she had to refinance. So I'm not sure what her balance is. I haven't, I haven't asked her yet. Okay, we need to know what she owes on the mortgage. And okay kind of a rough guesstimate estimate on her mortgage statement that's not the payoff amount but it's a rough estimate guesstimate <laughs> um, <laughs> and then uh why do you know why she's selling it she just said that she's tired of living in that house and she wants to get a new house okay so i know this is like your family but if it wasn't your family you would have to dive deeper into this why so she's saying she doesn't want to live in this house anymore. She wants to live in a new house. Like when she says new house, like a brand new house or just a different house? Just a different house. What does she want different about this new house? Um, she just doesn't like the fact, because like I said, the garage is enclosed and then she has like three small rooms down one hall. So she wants the rooms to be bigger because she has daughters, you know, and she feels like the rooms are too small. Okay, so she wants bigger rooms. What else? Um, that's that's all I know really is that she wants bigger rooms. Okay, so what you gotta do is you kind of gotta dig deeper with your seller. So when we talk about motivation and why, the the why is so important because the why is gonna be is gonna make them do stuff, right? So she wants mm -hmm. to house because she wants another house why because the rooms aren't big enough and she has daughters I'm sure they're getting bigger they want more space or whatever so that's the first layer of why 
the rooms aren't big enough. Okay, why? Because, you know, my daughters are growing and, you know, they need more space. Okay, what's important about them having more space, right? So you kind of got to dig deep into, okay, you know, it's just uh, essentially getting into the real heart of the why. You know what I'm saying? Why do they... Yeah. Oh, well, you know, one loves to, I don't know, whatever that may be. You know what I'm saying? You just got to dig deeper into that why. Okay. And mm-hmm. you have to get that payoff amount. Okay. Because we got to make sure that, you know, we're, we're giving a good estimate on numbers. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. And so if this was somebody you didn't know. And then ha- get, get an appointment day and time where you're going to meet with them to go over this market analysis that you're going to do. Right. So these, mm-hmm. these three at the bottom, those are the most important things to find out. I don't care about be- bedrooms, bathrooms. I'll figure the rest of that out. This you can't find somewhere else. Okay. So then next, this is what I would do. I would add that person in command, right? Mm-hmm. For the tax record. So this is what I do. I go to Georgia MLS. Don't look at my violation. Just focus. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are i like georgia mls because i'm just a georgia mls kind of girl you can also look up tax records on fmls but I'm, so we'll go with the tax feature. you can see this right here which says property search yes okay so you can put up to four counts in here if you don't kind of know where the house is um and then let's put the address by 64 and you don't even have to type the whole thing it'll pop up (laughs) so you click on it and this is the tax record so if i was at the office i would print two copies one for me one for them so you just hit print i print two copies okay so So you sound like a robot again but i yes i think you're saying yes one for yourself and one for the seller so two copies yes okay so I'm looking at the tax record. So if there's a subdivision, it would say it here. Sometimes there is. Right. Sometimes it's not. Okay. Tax records are about 50-50% right. About 50-50%. Okay. So this is. So this is the square footage. It says 13. Oh, I can't hear nothing. You're saying. If you're talking, I have, I can't hear nothing. Is there any way you could put your question in the chat? Are you asking me a question? Oh, I can't hear nothing. Okay, if you're asking me a question, put it in the chat. Um, okay, so we're in Gwinnett County. We got square footage here, right? And this is the seller's information. So this is the person that has to sign on the listing agreement. So sometimes you'll talk to like one person, but it's two people, two people on here. Both of them have to sign. Okay. Okay. And then, so it looks like they bought it 2005 for 130. Um, they have filed homestead exemption, that, so that's really good. The tax amount is twenty fifty five for twenty twenty. I'm just going to write that down because I need to know that for the payoff amount. I mean, for the net to find the net. Um, here, there's no mortgage history found, but that could may or may not be true. Um, this is where you, I saw where you had that foreclosure information, so that's there. Um, so year built 1978. So that's letting me know I need a lead based paint disclosure. Okay. Um, this shows three bedroom, two bath, and it doesn't, sometimes it'll say garage here, square footage, but again, it's not on here. So it's okay. 
And I'm going to, oh, here it is, garage with an extra 44. So I'm going to put four, four, one. So I'm going to add the 13 and the four together since they enclose the garage. Um, okay. It's on 0.73 of an acre. So it's almost on a whole acre, which is good. Um, lots of land. Um, so this is the subdivision, Quail Run. Okay. Um, I'm going to write down Quail Run. Okay. So, and so I would print this. Okay. So then the next thing I'm going to do is do the CMA. So full disclosure, full disclosure, CMA <laughs> are just guesstimates. Everybody has their own way of doing it. There's no right or wrong way to do it. This is just how I do it. But again, all I'm doing is doing my best guess, and I've never even seen this house. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I'm just showing you how I do it. There's lots of different ways to do it, but this is what I do, okay? It's a four-step process. <laughs> okay. I like to put this disclaimer out because this is where agents have the most, this is where agents have the most anxiety is the CMA. What's the price? This is how, this is what's going to happen in my mind. I'm going to look up information and what I'm doing is I'm coming up with a range. Like this is the bottom, this is the top. And the more information I get, the closer I'm trying to squeeze that range in. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then yeah. if I'm doing this CMA and I've never seen the house, I'm kind of just sticking with a range because I'm going to give you an example at a listing appointment in a, um, dang, what's that community? Not Water's Edge, it was a, it, anyway, it's a, it's a really nice community in Stone Mountain. All the houses are nice there, right? So I was like, yes, mm -hmm. good one, corner lot. I Googled it, I saw it's a four-sided brick house, corner lot, beautiful looking home. I did my CMA, I was all ready, 3.30. 3.30 was the price I came up with. <laughs> I get to the house. <laughs> They let me in. And when I tell you, you've ever seen um, Hoarders, the show Hoarders? Yes. Okay, so it was a light case of Hoarders with a case of what happened here? Every single door frame and door kitchen cabinet had damage. Every single, it was, I was like, like what happened here? You know what I'm saying? And so they're like, oh, have a seat. And I'm like, I'm so... <laughs> My leg, <laughs> like I'm trying to sit on the edge of the couch because I'm, I'm like you had to know you You're ready to go. You picked this time, day and time for me to come in your home, and this is how you letting me see it. Like I would never, ever let anybody. Like what craziness? <laughs> anyway, I say all that to say is I went in thinking three thirty, but after I saw the house, it was one eighty. As is one eighty because somebody. Oh, wow. I'm, they gonna have to come in here and redo all these cabinets, all these door frames along with the doors. So much drywall damage, floors, like paint. Like we're gonna have to. So immediately, my CMA went from three thirty to one eighty based on the condition. That's the only thing you don't know ahead of time if you if you have not seen the property before. Is what I'm saying. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, girl, I was like, oh my god. And when you start going on listing appointments with, 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 you know, people that you don't know, you'll be so surprised how people just let you come in their house looking all kind of crazy. I've seen undergarments hanging from the bathroom walls and the, the shower thing. I'm like, man, I don't need to. Oh my gosh. Yeah, put your drawers up, please. Okay. I'm here. You invited me and you just, oh, she's like, oh, don't mind that. Ma'am. <laughs> I don't need to know what kind of drawers you wear. Okay, Any, anywho, so let me, so I'm putting the disclaimer out there that this CMA is, I'm looking for a range based on the information I have. Sometimes you might see old pictures of the house online where you can kind of gauge, you know, is it updated or not, but this is just a guesstimate, okay? 
<laughs> All right. Okay. Let's go back. All right, let me share my screen. So, so I did the tax record. So now I'm gonna do the CMA. I have a four part CMA. Okay, step one, part one, uno part. I am gonna Google it. Google the address. I want to see what the homeowner would see if they Googled their address, right? And I'm specifically right. looking for, is this a ranch? You know what? I'm looking for a ranch house. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, for my parents. So I'm, anyway, let me dig digress. I'm looking for Zillow, okay? I'm looking for the Zestimate. Step one, this is just my process. Don't judge me, Zestimate. And I'm putting the date, 725. Now, the Zestimate's a real tricky, tricky, okay? They like to switch up on you. So I always write the date and the Zestimate. So right now it's saying 247,700. And I get to see some pictures, okay? Yeah, that's the inside. That's exactly how it looked. This is how it looked right now. Let me move this over. Okay. Yeah, she has the tile floor. Tile. Um, Cute. Yeah, she has tile floor. She has she changed the wood in the kitchen. It's dark now. But yeah, that's how it looks. So the bathroom could be up. The bathroom has been upgraded. The bathroom doesn't look like that. Okay. okay. And that's the big room that, that's enclosed. Okay. Oh, so it's like really done. Like it's got heating and air and everything in here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Okay. Backyard. Yeah, that's how her backyard looks. Okay. Those must have been the pictures they put when when she was doing because they had listed her property for the foreclosure and they had even included the washer and dryer. She was like, "No, not the washer and dryer." Please, Louise, you just gonna give my washer and dryer away? <laughs> my God. Okay. Um. All right. So this is step one of my process. I'm looking up this estimate, right? So it says three. Uh -huh. I'm checking the information to see how it compares, right? So 247,700. Okay. Step two of my process. Is, yeah, I know, right? N A R R P R dot com. N A R R P R dot com. I know it's a lot of R's in there, <laughs> but you have an account as a as a KW agent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm already logged in because I'm gonna be in here. So let's put the address in 564. Okay, no, you in here. <laughs> in here, okay, field. So as you start to type again, it'll find it. Just click on it. Mm -hmm. This is step two. This is just my step two, okay. Property summary. 225. So I'm going to write down NAR under my Zestimate. Zestimate said 247. NARRPR says 225.30. Okay. And that's again, I'm looking to see if this information is consistent. Three bedroom, two bath square footage, 0.7 of an acre. Now there's a range from 205 to 245, right? This is a range. Um, and the and it says the high score goes towards the highest end and the low score goes towards the lowest end. Well, you see it's five stars, it's pretty high, right? So right. it could go from 225 to 245 in that range because the confidence score is very high. So in this, so this, this is how my brain is working. We got 225 at the bottom. We got 247 right now with this estimate. Okay, so this is just where my brain is at, 247, 225. Now mm -hmm. we're on to step three, right? Step number three for me is FMLS. FMLS. I look at FMLS, but I'm doing my actual CMA in Georgia MLS. Not to get confused. 
but this is just step three of the four step process. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm going to go search residential because this is residential. Okay. And I'm going to put the address here 564 Field Stream. So as I start to type it, it should, there we go. And then I'm going to click on it. So make sure it says map area selected and you see the address because sometimes you click and it don't pop up right. Okay, so then I'm going to do a half mile radius around that address. So what I'm looking for on this left hand side, I want to see what's active. I want to see what's coming soon. I want to see what's pending and I want to see what closed in this time frame here, right? Okay, so let me write that down. You said active. Active under contract, coming soon, pending and closed. It's on the video, it's recorded. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, so the reason why I'm looking for active is because I wanna see what the competition, who's our competition out on these streets, right? Mm -hmm. The pending, I wanna see who's gonna be my current, my new comps coming up, possible new comps. And then closed are comps. Those are what have closed and the appraiser is going to look at, right? So I got 23. That's a good number. So I'm going to hit results. So now, based on these results, you remember that the subdivision name was Quail Run, right? So I'm going right. to I'm going to hit subdivision complex and I'm going to sort it. So right now. I see one other one in Quail Run, right? Now, sometimes, like you see how this says Quail Run and this says NA, mm -hmm. okay? This says yeah. Brookview Trail and this says Brookview, Brookview Trail. This is also probably in that subdivision, but the agent was lazy and didn't type the subdivision in. <laughs> yeah, that is in the subdivision. Exactly. Now, why does that? Why would that one say La Mancha up there? Because that's also that's the main road that runs through the through the subdivision. Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look. So the these are the, all the results. You can see them in a line display, or you can hit map. Oops, oops, map. And let's see where they are on the map, because maybe. It's, you know how like there'd be different parts of a, different phases of a subdivision. Sometimes they have yeah. that could be the case here. Okay. So what we're looking at is this is the house and these are some comps that are beside it. So for instance, like you see how, well, let me, let me do this. You see how this one connects to this one, but this one don't connect over here. You see what I'm yeah. saying? You see how these are the three yeah. and they don't connect, even though they're in the half mile radius, they don't really connect. This is Poplar Ridge, by the way. Okay, so then over here, you see these kind of all blend into, it might be a different subdivision over here, like this, this, this street quail, quail run that you're talking about. Uh huh. Mancha is probably going this way, and quail run probably going this way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But these, oh. these are all yeah. close enough to be comps, and they're probably similar enough, right? So I'm mm -hmm. okay. I'm okay with if it's on. See, this is Brookview. So those are the two from Brookview, and then we have the quail run and the quail run, those two. Even though the subdivision says okay. matcha. Okay. Let me go back to the, uh, oops, oops. Who has the moon back on the phone? So these right here, these quail run ones are close. This one, th this one. So these statuses are C is closed. So what's active are these pending under contract. Oops, let me get that one too. Right. 
So let's now, mm -hmm. uh, we've kind of sorted by subdivision. Let's see. I'm just looking here for a similar address. Well, I'm feeling okay with that. So I, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna refine. I just wanna narrow. I just wanna look at these real quick. Okay, so we have one pending. It's a 3 3 I just want to take a look at it. This is what it looked like. I'm really, where is the remarks? No remarks. Wow. So Would we look at that one that has that fourth bedroom? There was one that said four bedroom. Yeah, but I'm, I just want to look at this one real quick because it's showing pending. So this was on the market and just went under contract. So I just want to see how it compares. So it was on the market for 14 days, right? It proposed close date is, oh, it should close today. Should close today. All right, so it looks like a two week close and I'm almost um, for sure it's cash, okay? So, all right, so I was looking at the pending one. So, so look at this. 206 to 259. Now, I've already decided in my head that 225 was my lowest, right? right. So I kind of want to see what this two, what this one looks like, because that's 225, right? Mm -hmm. On 0.7 of an acre, two years older, a little bit smaller. It's kind of nice. I mean, they redid this. That's cute. Inside looks nice. Yeah, that's pretty cute. Okay, I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad at your little backyard. Okay. <laughs> cute, cute. Okay, fine. Right? So listed at 224.9, sold at 224.9. They did 4,500 in closing costs. So it was conventional. It closed in February. Right. So that was quite a bit ago, February. That was 225. Now let's look at this 259. That's this one. Hmm. Same kind of acreage, similar square footage. Similar age. So in my mind now, now my mind went from 225, my range 225 to 259. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, versus a 245. Yeah. So now I'm thinking maybe we could get some more. Maybe we could get some more. You know what I'm saying? If 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 she's updated the bathroom and all that kind of stuff. So you know, 225 is extra, extra low. Like I definitely wouldn't do 225. You know what I'm saying? So now that I'm looking at it. You know, we got 259, 225. So what's that? 225, 260. So I'm like $35,000 spread. So let's say 230 to 260. So this is what's happening in my head. I'm just talking out loud. So I'm just kind of getting this range. So if I, <laughs> I'm like 250 something, maybe 240 something. Let's keep digging, right? So this is step yeah. two. So step four is I'm going to Georgia MLS and I'm going to cloud CMA because that's do the CMA that I'm going to print. Okay. So you'll log into CMA. Now, if you've not done CMA uh, at all, set up, go to your settings and set up like your profile picture, all your stuff. So that all your information shows up on your CMA and it doesn't look crazy, right? Set up your marketing, the marketing stuff, okay? If this is your first time. All right, so I'm gonna create a new report, CMA. Oh, where'd you go? Uh oh, did I lose her? Uh, I'm gonna keep going. Okay, so I'm gonna put it under your name. I'm gonna put the address in. Again, it's just like the other ones. It'll pop up and you'll click it. And when you click it, 
usually it'll pull up the tax record information, but if not, that's okay. So we're gonna call this one a four bedroom, two bath. And let me add up this square footage. So we had 1335 plus 441776. The type is residential. Um, and then I'm just going to go with a quick and dirty and see what happens. Are you back? Okay. Yeah, I'm back. Okay, okay. I was like, oh my God, is she there? She's not there. Okay, I see her back. All right. So um, I just put in your name, address, information. Now I'm about to pull comps real quick. Okay, so how it looks kind of very similar. You see the house is in purple. It's got the comps on the map where you can kind of see, you know, um, and then they're down here. So I'm kind of looking for the ones that I had before. Like, so look at this price, 285. This is not near where we were looking at, okay? 254. Let me look at this one. No, doesn't look the same, not similar. Quail Run, we know, is in there. Let's see what Sancho looks like. Hmm. Hmm. No, this is not the same. <laughs> I'll take that off. Uh, Brookview. Nope, take that off. Oak Ridge Way, Poplar Ridge. We could take these off. Pit and Tail, take that off. Brookwood. I want to bring this one in. Quail Run. I want to bring in. Let's look at this one. Nope, this is not the same. Take that off. So right now, if you see this kind of range where it says 206 to 250, so I'm gonna look which one is 206. Brookview Trail. You can actually take this one off. So now it's kind of telling the story that I'm thinking, right? In between this range. Let me look at the 211. Okay. So the range from two from to two fifty. Um, I can kind of hear you. I, I'm really, I'm yeah. I'm looking for the range because I kind of want to tell a story with the CMA to the seller. So now is important to kind of know what their payoff amount is and how much are they looking to to walk away within their hand, right? So based on this information and without me seeing the house and right now, there's really nothing that's on the market right there. You know what I'm saying? So based on kind of mm -hmm. what condition and all that kind of stuff is, I would kind of lean, in my mind, now this depends on what it is they wanna walk away with. So for example, this purple part, when you hit this drop down, this is where you do the net sheet. So the net sheet, let's say they have a mortgage payoff. If you had to guesstimate a number, like did, are they selling this house to buy another house, right? Right. And so they're probably gonna need some down payment money, right? Yes. Do they have an idea of how much they want to walk away with in hand? Um, I haven't I haven't discussed that with her yet, just because it was just like a casual conversation when she was telling me that she was looking to sell. So I didn't really like. Get 
you know, she was wanting to earn from the sale. I can only hear like a little bit of what you're saying. So what we're going to do is I'm going to kind of guesstimate. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can look right now. Pulling up the tax record from MLS, uh, FMLS. Um, just to kind of see if we have any other mortgage information. Um, Um, 2005, 2005, I don't see. So let's just say, let's say worst case scenario, they owe 130 because they've been in since 2000, um, five right it's almost 20 years that's a long time let's just let's just say they owe 130 right okay so you have your mortgage oh i lost her again oh okay well, let's just say she owes 130 and then she has a mortgage payoff plus she has her portion of property tax to pay at closing right so i'm looking at the tax record her, t her tax amount is $2,055. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do 2,055 divided by 12. So it's a, roughly 171 a month. So it's end of July. So let's say August. Let's say we list in August, we close in September. September is nine months. So I'm going to do 171 times the nine months. That's 15, roughly 1542, right? So they'll have to pay fifteen forty two towards taxes, roughly, right? Um, sometimes I put in. What do I want to call this? I it used to be like a seller contribution towards closing costs and stuff like that, but we're really not in that market anymore, where people are asking for closing costs right now. I want to put in a buffer. Let me call it a buffer. That's what I think I want to do today is call it a buffer, seller buffer. So this is if they choose someone to give to buy the house that has financing, let's say they're getting an FHA loan or whatever, and FHA comes to appraise the house and they say, oh, this house is worth 250000 except, you know, the windows, you know, for FHA, all windows have to be operable. And you know how sometimes you have that one window that got painted shut? So maybe it costs like 100 bucks to get it, uh, all the windows unstuck and operable or whatever. So I just want to put in a seller buffer, let's just say $500 for the just in case something, something happened, okay? Then the next thing I'm going to put in here is real, oops, real estate. Pro professional B. Then I'm gonna put max amount. So this is real estate commissions. Okay, so this is based on what I think the price is gonna be. So and and I want to be very clear when I'm doing my CMA, I'm I'm coming up with the starting price. And you gotta think it. You gotta explain this to your seller. You gotta explain this to your seller. You got a starting price and a finish price, like like a race. Like you got the starting line. And they got the finish line, okay? The starting line is the list price. The finish line is where we're going to end up. So you may have a seller, let's say for instance, your seller wants to, to list at 250 and you're saying, I think we should do 240 and let them bid their way up, right? Because we do want to get an offer at 250, right? So if we say, okay, I want to get an offer, seller says, I want to get an offer at 250 you say, I want you to get an offer at 250, but I want you to have a clean offer at 250, right? So if you list your house and you get one offer for 250, or you list your house for 240 and get 10 offers that go above 250, these are going to be more cleaner offers because they're competition versus the one offer where they may ask for a warranty and a termite letter and all this. And no, right? You got 10 offers. You can say, no, 
no, no, no, no, no. You can have the cleanest offer, period. So you got to explain the difference between starting line and finish line. So I understand we want to finish at 250. Let's start at 240 to finish at maybe 250, 255, 260, right? Let's work our way to that 250 the cleanest way possible, okay? So I put in 240. I know it'll probably, if I list at 240, it'll sell for more than 240. I know that, right? So, yeah. oh, you're back. Oh, you're back. Okay. I just was yeah, like, I had to come outside. For some reason, my it works a lot better outside. Okay, awesome. Okay, because I was like, I'm going to just keep talking. It's recorded. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, I was so bad. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's okay. We, I got you. So right now we're talking about net sheet. So I was estimating a price at 240 and then I'm figuring out commission. You got to do 240 times 6%. Because when you list a property, you charge 6% and you will share 3% with the other agent if there's another agent. So I want to do the fee for 6%. So at 246% is 14400 So based on, and, and I was saying this is a starting price, 240 I know if we list at 240 we'll get offers more than 240 okay? So worst, and I like to show them kind of worst case scenario because I kind of want to under promise and over deliver. So yeah. if, if I know, and this is where the big why comes into play. If I know her big why to sell this house is so that her daughters can have more space and, you know, enjoy, you know, their, their growing years or whatever. So the goal is to get enough to buy the next house, right? Right. So, I guesstimated if her mortgage payoff was 130 because she bought it for 130. So let's say her mortgage payoff is 130. I mean, she bought it in 2005. So I can't imagine her, unless she refined and cashed all the way out, we don't know, right? It doesn't look, I don't see mortgage history on there. So we're just going to go with this until you find out the real number. And you put mm -hmm. the real number here. Okay, but let's say it's 130, her portion of property tax, a little buffer money just in case real estate commissions, she should net a little over $93,000 in profit. Okay. Now the buffer money, what would that go towards? So buffer money is like if somebody's getting financing to buy this home and they get a mortgage and the mortgage company comes to do an appraisal, sometimes the appraisal is subject to repairs sometimes. And so for instance, with FHA, all windows have to be operable. And you know how sometimes you got that one window that you painted shut on accident, but you don't care because there's a dresser in front of it. <laughs> yeah. The, all windows got to be operable. So that's just a little buffer money just in case there's something that needs to be fixed per the appraisal. Okay. Or maybe inspection if they want to do something, right? But it's just buffer money. So based on all of that, they should walk away with a little over $93,000. Now, that, if you know, let's say you had a conversation with her and she was just like, man, you know, I just, I, I just need to walk away with, you know, 60,000 enough to put down a down payment and pay to move and all that kind of stuff and maybe some new furniture. Then, mm -hmm. you know, she's going to net way more than that. So this is a win-win. But let's say she says, oh, I got to net at least 100,000 or else I won't move. Well, you're at 93, but you already know you're going to get offers more than 240. So it's, it's close. You could get a hundred or more. Okay. So again, this all the, this whole conversation is going to have to you you got to be more accurate when you get the information from her. So that's why on a seller lead sheet, that information, that mortgage payoff is so important, and mm -hmm. that why is so important because that's going to help you figure these numbers out. So my conversation, I for example, let me give you another real life example. I had a listing appointment. This lady, Leisha Ingram. Okay. Oh, I shouldn't have said her whole name, but I did. Um, <laughs> I did it. She was a great client. She, you know, she's kind of like an investor flipper and she lived in this house. She, she did a lot of work to this house. And I had did a CMA for her and it looked like she was going to net about $36,000, right? So I go in there, I do my mm -hmm. presentation and I'm like, da, 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 da. And you're going to net $36,000. She was like, if I don't get at least 50, I'm not going to sell it. And I was like, oh, I wish I would have knew that. Like, 
before because I would have came at this differently. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would have been like, okay, I know you wanted to net 50. You wanted to net 50 because you were looking to sell and buy another property, you know, and, you know, what if you were to get 40? Would you be able to make 40 work? If she would have said, oh, I can try to see what I can do, then that would have been a different conversation. She might have went with it. But I was like, you're going to get $36,000. She was like, nope. <laughs> And so <laughs> you got to know ahead of time what, and I, I don't ask sellers, what do they want to sell the house for? Because what sellers do is they say, I want to sell it for 200. I owe a hundred. I'm going to make a hundred. That's not how it works. Okay. So I want to find out what is it that you want to walk away from this sale within your pocket? What is that number? And then what is that number for? It's to do what with? Because most of the time, people is going to tell you a number higher than what they really need, right? Because we just do that, okay? I need 25, but I'm going to say, right? Okay, but if you were to get 40, you still good? Yup, 35, I'll take it. So it, it's called a financial thermostat. So you can gauge people's, so let's say, for instance, she, she said, oh, I got to have at least 150 or else I'm not selling. Okay, well, what is it about, what's important about 150? Well, I need to be able to put enough down on another house and I got to buy furniture and whatnot. Okay. How much house are you looking to buy? And then run that number. How much would she need for down payment? How, what mm -hmm. kind of where, furniture? What kind of furniture? Where? <laughs> okay. So let's put that number because people always overestimate, right? So we right. got to sit down and break that number down with them and say, okay, so you need to do this, this, and this. How much is that? Okay. That, okay, so that's that number. Okay, so we know we need at least $63,000 to cut even to make do what you want to do. It went from one hundred and fifty dollars to $63,000 when you really break down the numbers, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to be, so you got to ask a lot of questions so you can help break these numbers down because people are not going to tell you, people always overestimate, okay? All right, so let's go back. So now we have our CMA. I have a guesstimated price. Now, in my mind, I, I know I put 240 here, but that's because in my range, it was 230 to possibly 260. So if I do 240, I could probably get 250, 260. That's what I'm thinking in my head, right? So right. that's how I came up with it. Now, this is all just a guesstimate until I see the house. It could be 180. <laughs> it could be 250, you know what I mean? It just really depends until I see the house. But now that I've chosen my comps, I've done my net sheet. So then I'm going to go up to the top and hit customize report. Now, this is what it looks like. You could choose your themes or whatever. I keep mine pretty simple because, um, you know, I'm a simple kind of girl. Um, but these are the pages that's in your CMA. Right. So you have a title page. You can click on the eyeball, see what it look like. Right. See if you like it. OK, I like this title page. So when you put your info in, this is your stuff will show up. If you don't put your info in, it'll look blank right here. Now, let's say cover letter. What is okay. that? Um, oh, cute cover letter. We'll keep that agent resume. So you go look at it. Let's OK. I don't like that resume. So how about this? I'm just going to hit this and it'll disappear. Right. So over here, are all the things that you can add into your listing over here, and then you can take some of these, take it away, put it over here. OK, like some of the stuff I take out, um, like if the house is vacant, staging your home, don't need that. Moving checklist vacant, don't need that. Um, you know, if, there, if you don't have no client testimonials, take that off. Right. Now, one thing that I always add in that that you may see over here is online evaluation, evaluation analysis. This is what it looks like. Now, my step one is to get the Zestimate because here it says how accurate are the Zestimates, right? So mm -hmm. Zestimates vary up to 19%. So sold price was 211, Zestimate said 232. So these Zestimates have been higher than what it actually sold for, right? Yeah. So our estimates at 247 right now, but his estimates change. As soon as you list it, it'll change. As soon as you sell it, it'll change. It'll change, it'll change. 
right? Even next week when you pull it again, it'll probably change. But I just want to let people know because sometimes the seller will be like, oh, well, I looked online and it said my house was worth 247. Well, was it a Zestimate? Yes, it was. Okay, well, let me show you how accurate Zestimates have been. They've been over Zestimating. <laughs> I don't know if that's a word, but that's <laughs> Okay, they've been overestimating. Okay, now once the report is ready, the PDF version is the one that I print and I take with me. Yes, it's a lot of pages. Okay, that's just part of doing business. You have a lot of pages. It has the map, it has the you know, the comparables, average price per square foot, the different listings. I like to include the listings because I want them to see. Oh, well, you know, my neighbor's house sold for, for 211 up the street. Okay, but then let's take a look at the inside. You know what I'm saying? But this mm -hmm. that's not a good example. Like if it looked really, really good, like it was way higher, like, oh, this, you know, their house sold for 250. Okay, well, let's take a look inside. This is how it sold at 250. Look at that. You got to ask yeah. that all. <laughs> right? You set up like a model home. OK, so I like to include the pictures because I like just in case they hit me with the well, I know the well, let's take a look. Right. So average price two twenty eight Zestimates. On average. Are they selling for list price? Pretty much once it sells, it's selling for list price or above. Right. For the most part. Suggested list price and then I'm going to give the breakdown. Boom, 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 boom. Is this what you're looking for? Right. But I'm going to know ahead of time because I've already had this conversation. Now, that's the printed version. After I leave, if I want to do a follow up, I'll send them the electronic version. It looks so fancy. Right. I'm going to show you. This is what it looks like electronically. So you can click on any of these things and they're, they're like, you know, like this or you could do like that like on a map, or you could do like that, where it's stats. You could go here to, you know, do this, or you could go down here and go like that, um, you know. And it looks very professional. And then you can also set up a Zoom meeting with them if you want to set up a Zoom and go over it like that. But this is like the, um, this is the digital version of it. Okay. Okay. And that's the, the PDF version is this one. All of that. Well, no pages, blah, blah, blah. Right? Well, let's say I have a question. For example, if I were to help her sell her house and then help her buy another house, is that two transactions or is that the, like yes, is. within the same transaction? Commissions. That's my favorite. That's my favorite <laughs> is when my seller has got to buy a house. Now, now, this is where it gets tricky. Don't put that house up for sale until you get them approved to buy another house already. OK, so, for example, you could use uh, Homeward, that program Homeward, where Homeward will buy the house they want to buy cash, let them move in it, and then they can sell the other one and buy it back from them. Right. Because the thing is, right now, mm -hmm. if you go in putting offers contingent upon the sale of another house, they're not going to take it. Okay. Okay. So you're saying that my buyer wants to buy this house contingent upon the sale of their house. They don't want to do it. Okay. So you could do one or two things. You can help them turn into a cash buyer or don't put the contingency on there. I know it sounds so risky, but if, if you know you can get it sold, like for instance, my client, they're buying a house and they had to sell a house and we bought that other house without putting a contingent on the other house because I already knew I could get it under contract in 1.1 second, which I did. And so thank goodness we were able to line the closings up, <laughs> right? But if I would have did it okay. on the sale of a house, they would have said no. Okay. Right. Okay, so any questions about this information? So now you got to go back and watch this and do it on your own so it shows up in your thing and it prints with your face and number and, and everything on it, right? And then make sure you fill okay. 
Make sure you fill in your um, seller lead sheet. And then, so, so now we're back to the seller lead sheet. Do the quick CMA, which we did, right? And then the next thing we're going to do is do our listing, get our listing paperwork together. So if I'm, if I'm putting together a CMA, I'm coming over to do a listing. <laughs> like I'm coming over with the intention of you signing a listing agreement with me. So I'm going to get my listing presentation folder together with my listing paperwork in there, all the stuff that goes with the listing paperwork. And then, um, and then I'm going to get it ready for the appointment. If I have time, I might send a pre-listing package, but I haven't done that in so long because usually the appointments are with before the package would ever get there. Right. So once I meet with them mm -hmm. and then they're wowed, by my presentation and uh, personality skills and whatnot, then they're gonna sign the listing agreement. So then this is where this comes into play. These are all the dates. And then this is what you do. I got a listing, now what? Day one, this is what you're gonna do. Check for your agreements, put them in command, make sure you got these things going on. You know, make sure you got these things going on. And it'll just walk you through how to get it listed and how to go live. Okay. And then another thing that I had a question about was you said that you had a buyer sheet. Yeah, I do. Let me get that. Okay, because we also have a buyer, right? Okay. My cousin, my other cousin. That's right. Okay. So before we move on to buyer, are we good on the seller one? Um the information that I was able to gather in between the interruptions. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Did you like, we're, oh, 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 I get what you're saying. Don't worry. I'm going to, you'll get the link to this so that you'll be able to go back and watch it. Um, okay. But basically the CMA is done and you, the only thing you really need to find out for sure, for sure is that payoff amount. And then her motivation, mm -hmm. like, um, like how much money she's looking to get in hand when she moves so that you know, you know, do the numbers line up to what she's looking for? And then if she like, let's say you go over there and you show her all this info and she's like, yeah, girl, sell this house. Okay, great. So now, so, so for, okay, let me back that. If it was somebody I didn't know, right? Like, like not a family member, I would go over there I know she's selling this house to buy another house, right? So I'm gonna mm -hmm. go there with a buyer lead sheet as well, right? Okay. Let me share my screen real quick. Um, oops. Oops, hold on. Um, so if I know that my seller is looking to sell to buy another house, I'm gonna go in. This is how I would go in. You can see the buyer sheet, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is how I would go in. Hey, Melissa, I'm so excited to meet with you. I know, you know, when we talked last time, we want to get this house sold so you can buy another house, right? And she'll be like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, great. Now, um, so, th so let me break script real quick. This is my buyer lead sheet. Their information, referral info. I need to know where this piece of business came from because- you, the more you do business, the more that you know where your business is coming from, then you'll be like, okay, let me keep doing that. Okay. So for right. a typical buyer, this is what I want to know. And I'm not asking this technically in this order, but this is the information I need to know. Are you currently working with an agent? Well, you already know they're not, right? Because they're working with you because <laughs> you're going to help them sell their house, right? And are they a first uh -huh. buyer? You already know they're not because you're helping them sell a house, right? And you already know. Right. Oh, so these questions may not apply to your seller, but if you had a buyer that wasn't selling, you know, you, this is kind of information you need to know, right? So have you mm -hmm. talked to anybody about financing? So I know that my goal is to get them into another house. So first of all, I want to find out what kind of house they want and how, how can I get them qualified to buy this next house before I sell the house they're in? Because the seller cannot back out of a contract. So once they agree to sell the house, they got to get out. <laughs> right. Okay. So I'm going to actually skip the financing part and I'm going to go to find out what it is they want. 
how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms. And when I say price range, I'm asking them, where do you want to be monthly? Where do you feel comfortable monthly? Because some people cannot correlate a price of a house to a monthly payment. Like sometimes people are like, oh, you know, I just love this house. This is my dream home. The house is 350,000. Okay, great. Now, where do you want to be monthly in your monthly payment? $1,200. Well, that's not your dream home. <laughs> okay, that's not your home, period. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I ask people, where do you want to be monthly? So that way, when I call my lender to say, hey, Melissa's looking to buy a house, you know, they're going to sell a house in order to buy, I need to go ahead and get her pre qualified. She wants to stay around a $1,500, $1,600 payment per month. So I'm giving my lender a heads up where you want to be monthly so that my lender just doesn't qualify. Now you may be qualified to 350, but you don't want that kind of payment. So you got to ask people, where do you want to be monthly? Because you go under contract and they find out their payment is $2,200 and you, they're like, what? <laughs> you don't want to do that, right? So I'm going to ask my client, where do you want to be monthly? So I can give my lender a heads up. How many bedrooms and bathrooms you're looking for? What specifically are you looking for in your next home? Because we already know she's selling this house to get a new house for bigger bedrooms. So you already know when she look for houses for her, you got to find something that's got spacious rooms. That's not really something mm -hmm. you Google or, you know what I'm saying? You're just going to have to look through the pictures and kind of see, but you could tell by square footage. So you already know you can't do no 1,500, 1,700, 1,800 square foot house. It's going to be small. She's looking for rooms. She wants maybe 24, 25, 26, 3,000 square feet, right? Okay. Those are going to mm -hmm. be the size rooms she wants. She wants bigger. The house got to be bigger to have bigger rooms, right? Right. And then, you know, she wants a single family house. She wants a backyard. She wants a garage. She wants all that kind of stuff. That's a single family house. So when I get there, I'm going to say, hey, Melissa, I'm so excited. Thanks for letting me come by today. You know, I know we're looking to get this home sold because you're looking to buy a, a house with some bigger bedroom for the girls. You know, um, I would get I would ask questions about the girls. How old are they? OK, what are they into? OK, great. You know what I'm saying? Like if I didn't know them, I know you know them. But if I didn't mm -hmm. know them, I would ask those questions and I would say, OK, what's important about this next new house? I know you want bigger bedrooms. What else are you looking for? Well, I want to have a garage this time I can pull my car into. Okay, so we need bigger bedrooms and a garage. Anything else? Now, I don't let them go down a whole laundry list of things they want. Okay, if they're like, oh, I need an eating kitchen. I need this. I need that. I need that. I need that. Then I might go into, okay, I got your wants list. What's your needs list? You only can have like three, maybe four things on your needs list there's a difference between me <laughs> let's and narrow it down <laughs> right because you got somebody that's it's like i want 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 hardwoods this that and, the third. and a lot of that stuff don't matter like for instance i gotta have hardwoods okay well you could buy any house and put hardwoods in it okay that's that's right. something that that doesn't really matter right but if it's something that's like oh well i have to have a two-car garage now that's different that that's specific. You can't turn a no car garage unless you build one, right? So you gotta have to find out what right. main their their main need. She needs bigger bedrooms. We know that. She wants and needs a garage. She know we know that. She could probably pick one more thing. You know, like an area. I gotta be in this school district. Okay, right. Other than that, don't let them go down a whole laundry list. And if they do, then you got to write down the laundry list, write down everything they said. And they say, okay, these are all great items. Now out of this list, what are your top two non-negotiables? You see what I'm saying? Got to narrow them down before they go crazy. Okay. So I might write down my notes here, what they're looking for, this, that, and the third. So then I'm going to say, okay, mm -hmm. 
All right, so we're looking for a larger house with bigger bedrooms, gotta have a two car garage. You gotta stay, you know, within X, Y, Z miles of whatever, whatever. And you wanna stay in a payment range of, let's say seven, no more than 1600 a month. Okay, perfect. All right, great. And so the goal is to get, get find that house for you right now, right? Yes. All right. Great. Now, so this is what we're going to do. This is the plan on how we're going to get you there. We have two options. We can turn you into a cash buyer, go buy the house cash, move in it, and then we sell this house and you buy it back. Or we can go ahead and get you pre-qualified for a mortgage and then go house shopping with that mortgage. Now, let me, let me come off this share real quick. It's important that you kind of do a mini buyer consultation right there at your listing appointment because you got to prep, prep them for the, the, the buy part. The sale part is easy. The selling part is the easiest part. It's the buying part that's going to be difficult. So you kind of mm -hmm. got to prepare them to be the best buyer possible out there in these real estate streets. And right now it's, it's making them a cash option. Um, which you could do through pro proper uh, programs like Homeward. And, and I'll send you- It's I'll, called Homeward? Yeah, I'll send you the link to where you can just sign up for it and they'll do a whole co a coaching session with you and teach you what okay. to do with it, how, what to do with it and all that kind of stuff. Um, let me okay. message right now so I don't forget. Melissa, Homeward, Homeward. Okay. Um, and so, so basically I'm going to get them living in this next house. So, okay, Melissa, I'm super excited. We're going to get you into a bigger home with these bigger bedrooms. So these girls ain't all over each other. They can do what they want and you can pull right into your garage. Like I'm going to describe that positive future in that new house that she wants. Right. So, okay, Melissa. Right. All right. So I got your positive, well, you know, I'm going to describe all that. All right, great. So the only thing we got to do in the meantime, in between time, is get you prepared to buy and we'll go ahead and get the house prepped for sale. Okay. And then she's going to say, okay. All right, great. So this is what we're going to do. I've done some research. And so I will go into that conversation. I've done some research on your property. Now I know the goal is to buy, sell this to buy another one. Did you have a number in mind that you wanted to have in your hand to walk away with to buy the next house, right? And then she's going to say, oh, well, I don't know, 75000 Okay, I already know based on my CMA, she at least going to get 90 plus, right? So I already know right. I'm, I'm going to uh, under promise and over deliver. She only wants 75. I'm going to get away more than that, right? Okay, great. So we need at least 75. Perfect. Okay, so this is the process. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and get you prepared to buy. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and prep this house for sale, okay? So then what I'm going to do is before I leave, me and you will walk around this house and we'll kind of talk about what we need to do to get the house prepared. So based on what the house looks like, I'm going to walk around with my clipboard and say, I'm going to have, you know, good and bad kind of situation columns. Good stuff is all the stuff I want to highlight you know, updated bathrooms, granite countertops, marble tops, hardwood floors, all that kind of stuff. And on the bad column, I might say, okay, and not bad, but you know what I'm saying? Like replace all the light bulbs, missing light bulbs in bathroom, or, you know, you know, one of the doors might have damage. I'm writing all the stuff that needs to be fixed or remove all family photos. You know how like some houses got 32,000 photos going up the staircase, all, all those got to come down. Okay. You got to get them to get that home model show home ready. Basically, no personality in that home. We, if you're, if people get distracted by other people's families, they want to, oh, look at the baby pictures. Oh, look at that wedding. Oh, you know, we took that picture in, the, in that chair in the Bahamas because everybody does D all that, right? Pack all that up. One lady, mm -hmm. one lady, she was an avid reader. And in her living room, she had about 40,000 books. I mean, no lie. It looked like a library in there. Like they were bookshelves. Oh, wow. And I was like, okay, you get one box of books to keep and everything else you got to pack up. Okay. <laughs> you ain't going to be here long enough to read all these books right now. Pack up. You get one box of books. Everything else got to go. Right. So you got to go and make that list of 
what they got to do to get the house ready. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm going to walk through the house with you. Also, I'm going to leave you a seller's disclosure to fill out. This is just a yes or no about your house. And then I'm going to flip to the page where it says check all the items that's going to stay with the house. So I'm going to leave the seller's disclosure with them, right? But then I'm going to say, okay, here's the lead-based paint disclosure. I'm going to have them highlight where they need to sign. I'm going to take that with me. If there was an HOA, I'd have them fill out a community association. And then I'm going to do the listing agreement. So I'm not doing the listing agreement. Typically, I sometimes I don't do it first. It might be the last thing I do because mm -hmm. part of the process. This is all the paperwork to get your house sold. I'm just going to do the listing part last because it just kind of flows into, you know, it's the last thing they got to agree to. And if they've said yes through all these other ones, it's easier to say yes, right? Then I go through that listing agreement. So in that listing agreement, it's going to ask for the date that we're going to go live on marketing. So then I'm going to say, hey, how long do you think it'll take for you to pack up all these pictures and books? Okay, a week. I got my calendar out. Like I'm going to, we're going to fill in the date right there, right? And say, okay, my photographer, you know, usually can come within a week or so. And then I always list on a Thursday. I list on Thursday. I show Friday, open house Saturday, Sunday looking at offers Monday. That's the goal. That's the, that's the system, right? Okay, so list on Thursday. Oh, well, you said this is recorded. Never mind. <laughs> I was about to write it down. List on Thursday, live Friday, Saturday, Sunday, doing an open house both days because the open house is for you to get more business, not really to sell the house, right? So we'll teach you how to do the mm -hmm. open house system to where you can find more sellers and get more listings, okay? But or however, you gonna let them know up front, you're doing an open house Saturday and Sunday and they love it because they think it's to sell the house. The house gonna sell anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically that's, that's pretty much the process. So what I'll do is I will start preparing for the listing and I'm gonna have whatever, if I'm gonna have the lender call them or whatever program I'm gonna have them go with, I'm gonna have them do all that before we go live because I want to make sure they're good to go before we go live because I know once we go live it's going to sell okay what do you think uh you can you hear me yes I can hear you oh okay um no I was I was saying okay I was in agreement with what you were saying all right. So, I mean, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the process. And that, and that same process goes for your cousin, who's a, who's just a buyer by her, by themselves. I would go through that process of finding out same thing on that buyer. You know, if they weren't a seller and they're just a buyer, same thing. I would then go through these questions. Okay. Well, I know you're not working with an agent. You're my cousin. Okay. You don't want that black eye for Thanksgiving. <laughs> so, uh, so I know. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Are you a first time home buyer? And you know, you they probably rent if they're a first time home buyer. Mm -hmm. And then you're just gonna go into mm -hmm. that conversation of what are you looking for? What do you want? And most importantly, how much do you want to pay per month? So that and so for instance, if you were my buyer, I'd find out where you want to live, how many bedrooms and bathrooms. What's the, what's the best day for us to go look at houses, like your availability to look at houses? Because this market is very, very fast. So if you see a house today, we got to go out today, put an offer in today. Okay, so it's, it's that fast. So you want to prepare your buyer, let them know how fast the market is. And you want to make sure that you get as much information up front. They want to be no more than $1,600 a month. They're a first time home buyer. I would ask them, do you got an idea of what your credit score is? You know what I'm saying? I, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. what they say, because I'm going to let the lender pull it anyway. But some people know, like, is they're obsessed and they check it. And then some people are like, I don't know. You know, it's okay. The lender's going to find out anyway, right? We're going to find out anyway. Right. And then I would ask them, you know, kind of more about the house. The first conversation is about the house. What you're looking for, where you want to be. Where do you want to be payment wise? What kind of time frame are you looking? Because some people might say, oh, well, I'm, a, I'm in a lease and my lease is not up until next year, February. Okay, 
well, what we need to do is take a look at your lease and see about possibly being able to break your lease. Because if you find a house today and you do a contract today, you're going to be in it in 30 days. Right. Yeah, you're not going to look for a house today and you want to move in February of next year. Then you need to look the last week in January. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. typically if they have a lease, I'll be like, okay, let's take a look at your lease agreement. Most lease agreements say, okay, if you break this lease, you got to give 60 day notice and pay one month's rent. Well, that works out perfect because you could give 60 day notice. You got 30 days to look for a house and then close in 30 days. You'll be in your house when you close and then the next so let's say for instance you close on a house in july your mortgage payment is september your first mortgage payment is september so you skip august you're in the house in july july and august you don't pay until september so that month of august you could pay that penalty of that one month's rent so you won't be paying mortgage and rent the same month right mm -hmm. so, so find out time frame and then kind of find out, you know, what they're, you know, I keep saying monthly payment because that's kind of the most important thing. And then I'm going to say, okay, great. When is good for my lender to call you? I don't say, hey, buy or call my lender because they never do. When is good for my lender to call you? They say, oh, anytime tomorrow. So then I'm going to call my lender or usually I text my lender and say, hey, can you call Melissa tomorrow after two o'clock? She's looking to get pre-qualified. She wants to stay within a payment of seventeen hundred or less. She's a first-time home buyer. She thinks her credit score is six twenty-two or whatever, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And then let the lender call them and get them pre-approved, pre-approved, not pre-qualified. And most lenders know. Get them pre-approved. Make sure they've sent in their tax returns, their documents, and all that kind of stuff. And make sure. They have enough to cover their down payment and their own closing costs and an appraisal gap and inspection and appraisal. <laughs> so down payment, <laughs> I know it's like, girl, never mind. <laughs> so on, on average, now this is just estimates. Please talk to your lender for accurate numbers. These are just estimates. On estimate, people's down payment is going to be between Usually, if it's FHA, FHA has the best rates right now, it's three and a half percent. Okay. So their mm -hmm. down payment is three and a half percent. So on a on a two hundred thousand dollar house, that's seven thousand dollars down payment, right? Then they mm -hmm. also have closing costs and prepaids. Closing costs and prepaids are the cost to close a loan and the prepaids they need to have in their account. That could run another four, four and a half percent. So another 8,000-ish, 8, 8, 9,000-ish, right? Mm -hmm. And then they need inspection, depending on the size of the house, can run from 350 to 550 and then about 550 for an appraisal. So they need an extra $1,000 for inspection and appraisal. And then they need what we call miscellaneous money. How much are they willing to pay over appraised value? So for instance, if they want to buy the house, Let's say the house you're going to list, it's listed at 240. Let's say they'll pay 250 and they're willing to pay 10,000 over the appraised value if it doesn't appraise for 250. So let's say it appraises at 240, they'll pay the 10,000 cash difference. Okay. So in order to buy a house, they need to have this money ready. Okay. Or make your buyer a cash buyer there's different programs out there ribbon is real popular right now where ribbon will will basically buy the house for them cash and let them use the mortgage to buy it back from ribbon so i'll text you that one as well let me put that in my phone so you got to kind of know these different programs so that you know how to put your buyers in the best position right now cash is king there's a lot of cash floating out here so if you can make your buyers mm -hmm. cash Make them cash. Okay. okay. They also have like Divi. Divi is rent to own. Like, so if they can't qualify for a mortgage, maybe they can qualify for a rent to own program. There's a couple different companies that do that as well. You know, I saw that. I saw that one because I, I, it came up on my YouTube one time. Yep. Click on it. Learn more. Learn more. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> learn, learn more as an agent. They usually have an agent portals also where you'll sign in as an agent versus a consumer. Okay, so a program like that would also make them a cash buyer? Yep. Okay. Cash is king right now. And then also, there was some um, another thing. What was it? Oh, you, you, about the Facebook ads. Remember, I think you said I have to be part of the coaching program or something like that. Oh, okay. So Facebook ads. Um, um, at the office, you get three months for the hundred and fifty. But if you're in the coaching program, every single month you get fifty towards your Facebook ads. Okay, so how do I become part of the coaching program? Because I do need coaching. <laughs> so what we're going to do is text me over your email. I'll have Chrissy send you over the coaching contract. And then we'll set up an appointment to go through your goals, get you onto our Rockstar Agent um, program, and get you, get you set up on all of our stuff. Um, so I'm actually going to stop the recording so you can have this.